This is a huge trend right now of producing actual meat by taking a few cells and growing them up in the lab to produce things like burgers or chicken nuggets without actually slaughtering any animals. Hey friends, Serena here, and today we are talking about the fascinating topic of lab-grown meat. Maybe you've heard of it, maybe you haven't, but in the food and biotech worlds, this is a huge trend right now of producing actual meat by taking a few cells and growing them up in the lab to produce things like burgers or chicken nuggets without actually slaughtering any animals. Sounds pretty revolutionary, doesn't it? Well, we're gonna dig into the facts today, so keep watching so you can hear what the real deal is with lab-grown meat. My intention with this video, as with everything I do, is to create a peaceful, sustainable, and just world for all beings. And in that, thinking critically and digging past the surface level rhetoric of every new technology and idea is so important so that we don't just end up blindly following the leaders or those in charge without critically thinking for ourselves whether something is a good idea or not. All right, so I'm gonna do my best now to summarize the arguments for clean meat in just one minute. Let's go. Currently, meat, dairy, and the animal agriculture industry are killing our planet, killing us, and of course, killing animals. Most people just like the taste of meat, but don't necessarily like that it comes from a slaughterhouse or is harming the planet. According to those promoting clean meat, we need to find a different way to produce meat because the global demand for meat continues to increase, as do the number of animals killed for food every year. Clean meat, they say, is a good solution because it will be real meat grown from just a few animal cells taken only once that tastes the same but without the environmental footprint, the slaughter, and the bacterial and fecal contamination, hence the name clean meat. And finally, clean meat will reduce and possibly eliminate the need to raise and slaughter animals for food because companies like Tyson that are investing in clean meat don't care how their protein is produced, they just want to sell something that makes a profit. And most consumers choose what to eat based primarily on taste, price, and convenience. And since clean meat will taste the same and eventually be just as cheap and available as regular meat, producers and consumers will choose to produce and eat clean meat instead of regular meat. All right, let's break that down now. I'm gonna try and move through this pretty quickly, although there's so much information, there are so many things I could say. So if there is something I miss or that is unclear, please drop me a comment below and let me know so I can correct it or make a future video about it. I have five points for you today. Number one, clean meat involves exploitation and harm of animals. So the way that clean meat is made is by taking a few cells from an animal and then growing them up in a medium, in a lab, until you, know, you have enough to actually form them into something like a burger or chicken nuggets or a real piece of meat. Well, many clean meat proponents have suggested that they would be able to take cells from an animal once or from something like just a feather that fell off an animal and then culture and grow these cells in a lab forever and have them be able to produce endless amounts of meat without ever having to take them from an animal again, this is not the current reality. One major scientific hurdle is that most cells do not normally grow, divide, and replicate forever in a lab. The ones that do are generally mutated or basically cancer cells. Currently, the small batches of clean meat being made require taking regular cells and flesh from animals to repeatedly grow them into a lab to produce a piece of meat. The alternative option that the industry is focusing on for scaling up clean meat uses something called induced pluripotent stem cells, which do replicate and stay alive in culture forever. However, the technology to grow these cells, scale them up at the size needed to mass produce clean meat or make it anything that is cheap or commercially viable is simply not in place and would likely make use of gene editing and genetic modif modification techniques as well to make this viable and possible. So maybe someday in the future we will have a method of producing clean meat in a lab that truly doesn't require repeatedly taking cells from an animal, but at the current time, efforts are being spent to develop this and they're currently taking cells regularly from animals in the name of some future hope of having a technology that doesn't exploit animals. Another issue is the medium that these cells are grown in. The industry standard right now for growing lots of cells in culture uses something called fetal bovine serum. This is produced by killing, slaughtering a pregnant cow and then puncturing the heart of the still living cow fetus and draining all of their blood. 
So this is what fetal bovine serum is, and it has a lot of important nutrients, proteins that are particularly suitable to growing cells in culture, which is why it is so widely used. Now, to be fair, there are several clean meat companies claiming that they have produced an animal-free or a plant-based alternative to fetal bovine serum. However, not one viable option has actually been documented and published in the peer-reviewed scientific literature, making it hard for anyone else to assess this claim. When I've had the chance to actually ask individuals and scientists involved in promoting clean meat about fetal bovine serum, the claim I've heard from them is that, well, in tissue regeneration and regenerative health therapies where, you know, wound healing, where we use this, um, we already have alternatives that are fetal bovine serum free. However, when I actually looked at the research behind this, the alternative that those industries are largely using is something that is called human platelet cells. And this is literally an extract of expired human blood that they're using to grow cells. And I've linked to a study on that below as well. Number two. We already have really incredible, pretty cheap, and increasingly accessible plant-based alternatives. The Beyond Meat products such as the Beyond Burger and Beyond Chicken Strips are notoriously tricking meat eaters and people that can't really tell the difference between them. And numerous other plant-based products that have exploded in the past five years have also been featured in blind taste tests where consumers are unable to tell the difference between these products and traditionally produced meat. If it's not beef, I don't want it. First bite, I would know the difference between beef and whatever else you have. Little do they know, their Whopper patty was actually made from plants. You're f***ing kidding me. We're not, Grant. <laughs> Wait, plant what, what are you talking about? No animals, just plants. Really? <laughs> this is a f***ing cow. <laughs> no f***ing cow. Tastes like a Whopper. Tastes like a Whopper. Tastes like a beef burger. It's made of f***ing beef right here. You see that? It's beef. We swear, it's not beef. And dollar sales of plant-based meat products have actually increased by 24% from July 2017 to July 2018. So that goes to show just how incredibly well these products are doing, how much they're being adopted, and how they're already a great alternative to help people transition away from eating animal flesh. Clean meat, on the other hand, is still incredibly expensive to produce, has not been scaled up. This is coming from clean meat proponents themselves. When we first started this project, we created our initial prototype, our fish croquettes that we made back in September. Uh, that was about $19,000 per pound. Since then, we've come down to about $7,000 per pound. And Nobody's anywhere close to live growing a steak. Right now, it's a scaling up problem. And our job is to change this into millions and millions of tons of fat. So why spend all the time, money, energy, and resources investing into a technology that currently exploits and uses animals when we already have really great products that meet that taste and are working on the price and convenience factor? If we put all those resources into promoting those instead of supporting a technology that exploits animals, what could we do with that? All right, number three people won't actually choose to eat and purchase lab-grown meat. According to a study from the Pew Research Center, only 20% of Americans would be willing to try lab-grown meat. So this shows that there's a huge issue here where people don't like this idea, they don't really wanna eat something grown in a lab. There's also the issue of GMOs, and that there's lots of consumers concerned about that, and clean meat technology will likely not be organic or certified organic and will likely include many GMO and genetic engineering technologies. So how is this going to be widely adopted and replace real meat if people are gonna be skeptical of it? That's nasty. Ugh, doesn't sound right. I'm not really into like lab made things. It's unnatural. It just seems off. And it certainly won't fly with the happy meat, locavore, slow food movement, all these people that are into raising and killing their own animals or buying from the local, you know, humane farmers markets and things like this. Those individuals will never go for a highly processed lab grown product produced by Tyson and those that have been doing factory farming. The Weston Price Foundation has already come out against clean meat as well. And even those working, again, to produce clean meat, they understand this. I think in the beginning you do have to educate. You do have to say, here's what clean meat is. It's decoupling this idea of eating meat and eating an animal. Here's how we do it, transparently, openly, safely. Here's what conventional meat consumption is. If education is needed to get people to eat this stuff, then why can't we just spend that time, energy, resources, educating people about how we don't need to eat any animal products and animal protein to thrive? Number four, clean meat isn't likely to actually trade off 
with traditional meat. Clean meat advocates claim that having businesses like Tyson and Cargill investing in clean meat shows that they're gonna transition, that they don't really care what type of protein they produce, that they just wanna make a profit and feed the world, and therefore, if we can show that this alternative protein is better for the environment, better for the animals, doesn't require slaughterhouses, that they'll produce it instead. However, those within the industry are actually claiming that investing in clean meat will help increase traditional meat protein and the market for it. From Tri-State Livestock News, their slice of the global pie is very small, says Vasilos. The big picture is that alternative proteins are good for the animal agriculture industry if we use the competitive momentum they are creating to foster adoption of innovation to grow the total value of the protein pie. And alternative proteins will support animal agriculture by forcing diversification into the space. Every piece of beef, for example, is not equal, she says. In 2017, when Cargill invested in the clean meat company Memphis Meats, they said this. Cargill remains fully committed to investing in and growing our traditional animal protein business. Our commitment is reinforced by nearly $600 million in recent investments in conventional protein in North America alone, including the acquisition of Five Star Custom Foods, modernization of our turkey hatchery in Virginia, and the conversion of our Columbus, Nebraska plant into a cooked meats facility. So there's that. That's how they view investing in clean meat, not as something that is going to revolutionize the whole protein and global food supply to something that doesn't slaughter animals. And finally, number five, Clean meat reinforces this idea that we need meat or some type, of, some type of flesh and animal protein to survive. This is something that vegans and animal activists have actually been working to dispel for years. Much of our activism has focused on educating people and helping them understand the health dangers and concerns with eating animal protein, high cholesterol, and high saturated fat foods, and that we have another alternative that's healthier for us and, of course, better for the animals. Companies like Tyson and Cargill have been destroying people's lives by promoting the worst of the worst, cheap, unhealthy, horrible fast food that is making people sick, especially those in food deserts and otherwise impoverished communities. So what does it mean if vegans essentially turn around and join those companies, helping them mass market this new kind of still unhealthy animal protein to these communities? Because, let's be real, clean meat still has the animal protein, the saturated fat, the cholesterol that regular meat does since it is biologically identical. I've heard many clean meat advocates say things like, well, you know, you don't have to eat this, vegans don't have to eat this, that's, that's not who clean meat's for, and it's not for the, the people that really care about health and choosing what they eat, the, the happy meat folk. They can choose something different if they don't want this. This is for the masses that already buy Tyson products, cheap fast food items. However, the masses are often the ones that have no choice, that don't have the education, the information, the resources, the money, and the ability to choose otherwise. So then we're joining forces with these companies, essentially helping to promote further uh, unhealthy diets, helping the food industry and pharmaceutical industries that we often advocate against in efforts to keep people sick and unhealthy just with, an ant with, just with a meat product that just didn't kill animals. And additionally, we know nothing about the safety of genetically modifying and gene editing stem cells to produce meat. So yes, it might be biologically identical, but we will have no way of testing or knowing what the potential health effects of that kind of meat production are as well. So again, making, you know, testing this on the masses that don't have the education, information, or resources to choose otherwise. So the point I just want to make here to really wrap this up is I don't necessarily have a problem with clean meat in general. My issue is when vegans and animal advocates start promoting it as the solution that we have to do this to save animals because it's going to be our cure-all. And I think the evidence does not show that at all. So if pharmaceutical companies or biotech industries, if they want to start producing this as an alternative protein, go, you know, let them do that. That's great. And maybe some people will eat that instead of animals and maybe it'll help a little bit or 
help, you know, offset some of the animals killed. But my problem is when vegans and animal advocates start jumping on board, promoting this and pushing it, and is something that all vegans should be endorsing and promoting. That's where my issue really comes in, because this product is not vegan, especially in its current state, where it uses repeat animal exploitation and currently fetal bovine serum to produce it. And so then it puts vegans in the position of compromising and essentially selling out our ethical principles of not exploiting and harming animals in the name of reducing some suffering. And the reality is that all the evidence shows us technology is not what's going to solve our problems. Technology and focusing on some product, whether it's plant-based meat alternatives or clean lab-grown meat, that's not going to create a vegan world. That's not going to create the paradigm shift and total revolution we want. That paradigm shift comes from education. It comes from activism. It comes from helping people understand that animals are sentient, feeling, living beings, and that we don't, A, need to eat them to survive, that we're healthier not doing so, and that animals are beings in their own right and have a right to not be used as objects and property to be exploited. So please don't forget to hit the thumbs up and subscribe below right now to help me spread this message and help other activists think critically about what we're promoting and using to create a vegan world. I'll see you next week.